Hey, my name is Brian Hart. I'm 48 years old. I'm the bass player here on the praise team at Forestville Baptist Church. Story about my life. Uh, my mother was raised in this church. Um, so there's still a lot of people here that, that know my mom. They know my uncle. My grandmother went here for I'm assuming this is the only church she ever went to, and so she was here for about 80 years, um, her and my grandfather. Um, but um, my mother, at uh, 28 years old, I was 10 at the time, I watched her have a massive heart attack, and um, she would have another one the next day and it would take her life. And that began a huge life-changing experience for me. Um, my dad remarried um, a little while later. We moved about a half an hour down the road, maybe not even that far, and um, we may as well move to another state. I didn't know anybody. It was new friends, new school, and I missed everything from this area. Um, in the eighth grade, my dad actually, um, I talked him into letting me live with my grandparents for a year so I could go back to my school, be around the friends, go back to the church that I grew up in. And um, we did it on a trial basis for the one year to see how it went. And I ended up staying eighth grade all the way through high school. Um, even though my dad wasn't there, I still saw him a lot. Um, you know, I miss my dad. Um, during that time, but it turned out to be the best thing that happened uh, for me. I got really involved with the youth at Marietta First Baptist. Um, we went to a youth retreat, I'm guessing around 87 to 88, and um, on that youth retreat, uh, I got saved at a Petra concert, and um, which then began my musical journey because um, they were playing the music that I loved with a Christian message. That made a life-changing um, impact on my life. Was when I come back from camp, I, I knew I wanted to play guitar. I took two guitar lessons from a, a local guy here in Traveler's Rest named Jerry Lindsay, and I ended up really quickly moving to the bass, and I never looked back. Um, ended up playing in a few Christian bands at that time. Um, one of them in 1991, I believe, um, was the first time I ever played in front of somebody, and it was in the youth center next door, which used to be the old sanctuary here. And um, so that was, um, that was a, a unbelievable experience. We had a good speaker that day too, and there was a few youth that got saved that day. And um, I knew that God wanted me to use that at some level, at some, um, um, in some way in my life. I, pl I played with a few other Christian groups, and then at 25 years old, um, I ended up having an accident at work, and I had my ring finger amputated. And um, as a bass player or guitar player, whatever, that was devastating. I was done. I, I sold uh, everything I had. Uh, if it wasn't the next day, it was the following day. It was really quick. I got, I just got rid of everything. I was very self-conscious about the way that it looked, um, let alone, I didn't think I could play. I just didn't, and so I just completely give it up. Fast forward in my life to about seven years ago when I was diagnosed with stage three cancer. And um, that was the lowest point in my life.
Um, I didn't see it coming. I was in the best shape I'd been in since probably high school. I was working out all the time, running, lifting weights, and um, physically, I was in really, really good shape. But um, there was something growing inside of me that was, um, that was very bad. And um, I can remember getting the news um, from my urologist that, you know, that I had cancer. I didn't, I didn't know um, the level that I had until I saw the oncologist. And then she started explaining to me, you're at stage three, you have a mass in your abdomen, um, reference-wise is the size of a grapefruit. And um, this cancer is very treatable, but if we don't get on it quick, your, your press is pressing on a lot of vital organs. So we could shut down some of those, uh, some of those vital organs if we don't start shrinking this thing quick. When I found out I had it, within a week I was on chemo. And um, I've, in my life I've underestimated how chemo has made people feel. You know, I've had grandparents that had cancer that took chemo and, um, but um, there was an article I, I read um, that an oncology nurse wrote and it was called, I'm sorry I didn't get it. And it was basically saying, I'm sorry I didn't understand when you said you were sick, how sick you were. I'm sorry I didn't understand when you said that you're tired of how exhausted you were until she ended up with cancer and had to take chemo. And it was, um, it was uh, very hard. Um, I did 21 chemo treatments, um, eight hours each time. Um, I would do five days a week, eight hours a day. Then the next two weeks, I would only go one day a week to kind of give my body a chance to recover a little bit before they hit it again. During the second long week cycle, after that second long week cycle, um, I began to get really sick and I ended up in the hospital with a, uh, with a staph infection. I spent 10 days in the hospital um, and during that time in the hospital, um, one night when I was really probably at my lowest point through the whole thing, um, my wife just said, I, I don't want to leave you here tonight alone. I'm going to stay. And I was like, no, just, just go home, come back in the morning. All I'm going to do is sleep. And um, anyway, I convinced her to go home. That night, I had just a long conversation with God. And I experienced something during that time that I haven't before and I haven't since. And that was the undenying presence of God with me right then. I can remember just praying out and crying to God. I was like, am I gonna be okay? And the peace that came over me at that time, I, I just, I can't describe it. I mean, it's just almost like the first time you fly in a plane and you open up that side window and you look out, that breathtaking kind of moment, that's the only thing I can kind of relate it to. And I knew in that moment, though, that I was going to be okay. But now, that meant one of two things. I was going to be okay, he was going to heal me, and I was going to go out and witness and talk about what he did. Or, if I didn't make it, my journey's ended, and I'm okay. Um, And that, um, 
that moment completely changed my life um, <clears throat> going forward. Even though I was already saved, it was just like, okay, now I've experienced God. Uh, and um, the, the chemo treatments, as bad as they were, and as hard as it was going through what I went through, I'm glad I went through it because I, I wouldn't be where I am right now without that. Um, through those 21 chemo treatments, you know, my wife was there for 19 of them, spending eight hours a day with me. So, and, and having that encouragement at home was massive too. So going through my cancer treatments, we was living in a town called Ware Shoals, which is about an hour from here. And um, we moved back to Traveler's Rest and we knew of uh, uh, churches that we wanted to visit. Um, Forestville was one of the first ones. So when we came here, um, we came in and we were, we were blown away with the music, the choir, just everything about the church. And um, I knew right then that I wanted to start back playing music. I knew right then that this is what I'm supposed to be doing to give back to God for what He had done in my life. And um, my love of music, um, I wanted to get back in as well. And so um, we ended up joining the church um, I started taking lessons again just to see if I could still do it. Ended up buying a cheap bass on Craigslist and uh, realized I could. And I, it was just getting over um, the whole thing of people seeing that I'm, I, I don't have a finger. And um, now it's like, wait a minute, he's still doing that with without that he he's not you know trying to hide it he's not trying to whatever and so um i ended up taking some lessons and uh actually i still take lessons to this day but some of the first lessons that i took was through a guy named mike brandenstein who was the bass player for petra um, which was very cool um, that being um, where I got saved at, at the concert where I got saved at. And um, I still take lessons to this day because there's a standard that I, I want for myself. Um, being in front of people um, and being what they see when they come in, the first thing that they hear to get the service started is the music. It sets the tone for the service. And I would be doing an injustice to the people, to myself, to God, if I wasn't always working on trying to get better. And um, so that's why I still take lessons to this day. And, and there's a certain standard that I have for myself, not only musically, but how I live my life. There's a certain way um, that I should be if I'm going to be up here in front of people um, t sharing them through music who God is. There's a certain way and certain standard that I should live. And so I take that very serious. Being here where we're at now with our church, the revival that we're seeing in our church right now, because we are going through a revival um, with the new pastors, just everything Week to week, I, I can't wait till Sunday. And it, 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 when Monday rolls around, I'm just counting down the days till Sunday again. And I can't wait to see what God is gonna do in our church, um, where he's gonna take us, because you know all of our pastors now are a year or so new 
or within a year of being hired. And um, God has put everybody in this place for something that He's that He's got in mind and got planned. And um, I'm excited to see where we're going with this. Everyone has a story that somebody else needs to hear that can make an impact on their lives.